131, verse 1, My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. How many of you want to stay in His way? You want to be there through the thick and thin? Through the darkness? For some of you see some of your fellow travelers and fellow pilgrims uh, kind of winded and uh, they've met uh, difficulties on their way. You look back and you see some who have struggled, right? But the main goal is to reach Mount Zion. Praise God for the city whose builder, whose ruler, whose maker is God. Can you say amen? amen? And you that are listening by way of Ustream, and you that are in this lovely congregation tonight, that's what we look forward to. These weights that so easily beset us, the Holy Spirit can rid them of us. When I pastored Chattanooga, at that time it was Woodmore in Chattanooga and had a, an all-star basketball player. I had to look up to him. He was about like six foot five. I'd go over there in uh, Georgia, right across the Georgia line in Oglethorpe, and we'd go over and see he and his parents. And I never will forget seeing him practice outside and he always had weights around his ankles. I said, Jerry, what in the world are you doing? He says, I'm training. I'm training that when these weights are off and I'm in a game, I can jump high. I can get a lot of rebounds. And boy, he got a lot of rebounds. How many of you want to get rebounds? How many of you want to be on the winning team? Well, those weights that so easily beset you, cast them off in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance. There is freedom. My title tonight could be safe at the end of the day. At the end of the toll, you can be safe. You can be secure. The enemy is subdued. Praise God. I still vi feel the victory in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Revival is here. Revival's on the way. God is sending to this church and will send to this community an outpouring of His Holy Spirit. Do you believe it? This Godward journey involves submission and community. Psalm 133.1 How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Praise be unto God. Spoke last week, and we included this, the symbols of the Holy Spirit. We talked about the oil. We talked about the dew. Man, when the rainy season ended over there in Jerusalem, they depended on the, on the dew that descended from Mount Hermon down Mount Zion. And... It was so that they could even get a little drinking water from the dew. How many of you know when a dry and parched and Sahara desert experience, God still provides the dew? He has the grace that is sufficient for you. Praise be unto God. I think I'll shout a little bit. Hallelujah. Got something in my feet. Hallelujah. Now, if I was younger, I might have had a running fit. You know what I'm saying? I've been known to have running fits in, in a few years ago. I even have to watch now if I get a new pair of shoes. And I got a new pair of shoes, and they seem to me like they're a little heavy. You know? And I have to make sure that I rub those shoes on a sidewalk so that I'll get some grip because if I'm up here and my feet slip out from under me I say whoa how many of you know your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and when you hit those slippery places you're in a, you have
have an anchor. You have the sure footing. I know the pastor and you that have visited Israel. and We stayed in that Bethlehem hotel, that hotel, David Hotel or wherever it was. And we could see the, see the sheep. The sheep wasn't wandering here and there like those goats. But they were steadily, and boy, they had sure footing. Now, I don't know, there are not any goats here tonight. We're all sheep, amen? Smile real big. We're all sheep, amen? And we have a sure footing. We know the voice of the shepherd, and he knows us. Isn't that marvelous? Oh, thank God for his grace that is sufficient. And I'm glad to know that the Holy Spirit Shows me slippery places. See, I'm going to make heaven my home. What about you? I'm going to go to heaven. No matter what it costs me, I'm going to heaven. So the industry, my industry, my talents, what little I have, the dedication to my family and to what God has for me, I'm just going to lay up treasures in heaven. What about it? Because I intend to be there. And um, I'm not going to be like the little song that they sing, Lord, just build me a cabin in the corner glory land. No cabin for me. No cabin for me. What about a mansion on Hallelujah Avenue? Glory be to God. Now, I respect those who have that kind of heart and would say, if I just had a cabin, I'd want to be in heaven. I know what they're saying. I know their heart. Just to be with Jesus, no matter what it is, that's what they're saying. But, oh, thank God, He's prepared a place for us. And He's coming back again. I, I want to encourage you before I get in to this breaking down Psalm 134, not only do I encourage you to read Isaiah 66, but read Hebrews 10. Read the priestly prayer of Christ in John 17. Hey, I'm glad for the once for all atonement that Jesus has paid the price for us. Can you say amen? And we are one. I'll address that in just a few minutes. But there are just some scriptures that I don't have the overhead working, but if you can just remember some of these things, it'll be good as a part of your reading. What are you saying then, preacher? I'm saying Psalm 134 ends this series with blessing. Oh, I want to... Be blessed, don't you? Blessing is a reminder that our journey is God-centered, not man-centered. Blessing is a reminder that discipleship is about God's grace and not man's performance. Sometimes I have to take the remote and just... I'm telling you, it's the grace of God and not man's performance. And so let this little sermon tonight or this talk be a reminder to you that you're not alone. You're safe at the end of the day that the Lord is going to see you through. This psalm was perhaps penned when David appointed the orders of priests and Levites. You'll find that over in 1 Chronicles 23-26. You know, there were priests and then the Levites and then the captain of the guards. There was a sacred sacredness about the temple. The sacred watchers of the temple stirred us up to employ their time in praising God. Verses 1 and 2. 
And then a fervent prayer for the blessing of God on them or others in verse 3. So the psalm is going to teach us tonight to pray for those who are continually ministering before the Lord. As it invites all ministers to pronounce benedictions upon the loving and prayerful people. Praise God, we got a pastor that's on call 24-7. On call 24-7. I've walked in his shoes. You, you just don't work, uh, go to a cheap office. I spent as high as 16, 17 hours a day doing the Lord's work. Many years living off five hours of sleep. But I look pretty good tonight. I'm pretty healthy. I'm healthy physically, hopefully mentally, and spiritually I know I'm healthy. God is good. He's a good God. And man, does He teach us the right way. He surely does. So it's important for you to know that our pastor and his wife are continually ministering before the Lord in your behalf. And that's what you and I are supposed to do. It just hit me, uh, Revelation 7 and 15. John had a vision of heaven. And he saw in John 7 and 15 that the servants or the redeemed are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. Praise is appropriate any time. Can you say amen? And it will always be there throughout eternity. Praise God. That's who we're going to praise day and night. So if People can't worship the Lord now. I don't know what they're going to do when they make it to heaven. Because we're going to be praising God. We're going to come back with Him. We're going to reign with Him. Oh man, I'm, I'm tickled about what's going to happen and what I'm going to be a part of. Praise be unto His holy name. So, maybe you've gone not too far on your sojourn and you're winded along the way. This Psalm 134 provides an uplifting and reassuring vision of your future. When you read the Word of God, are you reassured about your future? I'm reassured every day when I, when I read the book and, and I, I try to pin down some of the prayers that come to my heart and my mind. A prayer like this, our Father in heaven. We do thank you for the covenant blessing that you bestow upon us in Jesus Christ. And the assurance that you never ever let us go. Go with us, we pray. Go with us into our various troubles and trials and difficulties. And be thou our assurance. That come what may, the Lord is my keeper. And the Lord is my shade upon my right hand. Hear us, Lord, for Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake, hear me. Got circumstances? Crawl under them on your knees in prayer. Praise God. He'll lift burdens from you. And if you do have those burdens and they're continuing there, tell the devil he's a lie. That you've caught a vision of what's in store for you. And you're going through a valley, yes. But devil, I know the lily of the valley and I know the bright and morning star. I know the rock of ages. I cleft to the rock of ages. And he'll hide me. David said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's indicative that the Holy Spirit must lead you and must guide you. Praise be unto God for that future that we have. I've had trials, 
But I can look back and see that trials kind of lie behind me now. And I'm getting to the top. I'm getting to the top. It seems that throughout my ministry I've had state overseers to call me. That's why I've been to several different states just like other pastors have gone. And I've sort of been a troubleshooter my entire ministry. Just go in as a team player, just preach the Word, love the people, work through some of the problems, and then don't be so wrapped up in wanting to stay or do this and say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. And just move on. You see, God has direction for you. One place I really wanted to hang my hat. The Lord didn't allow me to hang my hat. And He and I got in, not a tussle, but He and I got in a conversation. I sure did. He knows who I am. He knows he's had to calm my temper and my anger. He knows who I am. And he knows when I'm backed against the wall and I'm not going to be there. I'm coming. I'm coming out as a pugilist. I'm a coming out and fight the fight of faith. That's not even in my notes, but it sounds good. And when it sounds good, the Holy Ghost wants us to hear. We, we need to be hearers of the Word and doers of the Word. My mind's telling me to do something. My body said, whoa, oh boy. I wanted to kick my leg up then, but hey, you can't take the fight and the life and the faith out of a soldier of the cross. How many of you going to hang in there because you read the last chapter of the book? You read the last chapter. How many of you are looking for new heaven, new earth? You're looking for what God has in store for you. Let the man go all over the world promising this and that from America. Let him try to apologize for America. I told my wife today, cut the tube off, honey. When you get to the point where there's a little frustration, just open the book and read the last chapter. Read what God says that you got a future. Look at Psalm 134. I'm telling you, we bless those who labor 24 hours a day and they are throwing a blessing out on us and God's blessing us. And somebody give the Lord a praise offering in this place tonight. Praise Him. Praise Him. I know somebody's shouting in the living room, bedroom, or in the kitchen right now. Amen. Power of God goes through that U stream too. Somebody told me the other day, how in the world? That that program was taped three months ago, and that guy's prophesying that somebody's going to be healed. I said, well, it happened then. It's going to happen now too. <laughs> Woo! Praise God. I ain't, I ain't sounding off like that in a long time. Woo! Praise God. Happiness, happiness, praise God. You think Christmas has come to my house. Hallelujah. Christ is there. The greatest gift of all. Christ is there. Oh, praise be unto His name. If you haven't reached the top yet, let this psalm stand as a photograph for you of what yet will be, what yet will be. The final fearful thoughts. With this 15th Psalm of Ascent, the long climb is over. You wondered if you would ever make it to the top. 
the evening shadows cast themselves on the ground ahead. Is the entrance to the temple already shut? The gates barred for the evening? You hoped you could get there before the doors closed to that idolized place of peace? Has this long climb now been for nothing? Have you arrived too late? Made too many mistakes? Was it your last rest on the trail that perilously delayed you? Or what about that detour down below that you should not have taken? There are a lot of thoughts at the end of the way. You understand what I'm saying? Someone is waiting for you. Hallelujah. Someone is waiting for you. The light is on inside. Those 23 Levites, those three priests, that captain of the guard, those musicians according to 1 Chronicles 9 and 33 have their rooms in the temple. You want to read all about the tent and then over in 2 Chronicles 5 through 7, the building of the house of David, the building of the temple. I, I encourage you to read those important chapters that back up this great and glorious psalm. Oh yeah. They had to do bacon. They didn't have no bacon, bacon, but they had bacon going on. Yeah. Sacrifices being offered. There's a whole lot of work going on. The light is on inside. The door is ajar. You can get in still. It's not too late. You'll enter because those within did not rush off at the appointed closing time. They tarry. That means you have an entrance. That means you have an entrance. What can you say of such devoted ones? Those who stay at their post of prayer and duty long enough until you too had reached the place of safety and satisfaction. Verse 1 again. Praise the Lord! Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All you servants of the Lord who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. It's the people who kept the night watch of intercession who now Make it possible for you to enter. God has special priests who do not punch the clock of duty. But who tarry long hours until every last pilgrim coming up the mountainside has a chance to make it inside the gates of pearl. You'll make it inside the gates of pearl? Hallelujah. 
just inside the gates of pearl. Never seen streets of gold, but I'm going to see them. Never seen my Lord, but I feel Him, but I'll see Him. We'll see our loved ones. There's a great cloud of witnesses right now just rooting us on to victory. Oh, you can't wait to see what I see and what I'm enjoying. Oh, hallelujah! Praise the Lord for all His servants who don't walk off the job. Off the job of encouragement, prayer, and support when the clock strikes five. Now I'm just intertwining a little bit of now and then. Bless the Lord for their faithfulness as you slip into their evening song of praise. Lift your hands now along with their, theirs to bless the Lord also in His house. Let's just lift our hands. We bless you, Lord. We praise your marvelous name. You are to be praised. We magnify you in this house. Oh, glory be to God through the trials and the temptations, through the change of fortune, through the passing of our loved ones, we still can lift our hands in praise to you, knowing that we're safe at the end of the day. We are safe at the end of the day. God has not abdicated His throne. He's still on the throne. Blessed be His holy and mighty name. He's still on the throne. And I want you to remember that our great high priest himself never stopped interceding for you. Can you say praise God? With those other scriptures that I've given you, look at Hebrews 7 and 25, along with John 17, 13 through 26. Hebrews 7, 25, the underlying theme there is Christ always lives to intercede. He's always interceding for you. He's not punched a time clock. He's already knowing what you're in need of. Through the prophet, the words come forth. He knows your thoughts before you think them. And He knows the expected end. That's our Lord. Man, I read again today. I don't know how many times I have read the words of Jesus. And I was so thankful when Brother Scott just read what Jesus said in the Bible. Just what Jesus said. That's powerful. What Jesus said. He said we're sanctified and we're sent. He said we're protected from the evil one. And he prayed to the Father that we be one. But here's what I really like. We have the full measure of His joy. Full measure. Not just a thimble full. When I'm asking for grace, I don't want the Lord to dispense a thimble full. You know what just hit my mind? My mama's sewing at a singer machine. And she'd have that thimble in her hand. She was a sewing. She was a knitting. Well, she had to do for me. I didn't have about two changes of dress. I mean, great day. She had to really know what that singer machine could talk to you. Yeah. Now, look at that thimble. He doesn't dispense a thimble full to you. 
What about hands full on purpose? What about a hand full? Oh, my daddy had a hand about two or three sizes of mine. But when he grabbed me, he's grabbed me on church got campground in Mauled in South Carolina. Boy, don't you be running away from me. I mean, I got loose out of town. I was where there was a lot of people and a snow cone wagon and church of God hot dogs, hard to beat. I done saved up some money. I, my mama done gave me a nickel or two. You could buy a whole lot with a nickel. <laughs> oh, it's good anyhow. But when my daddy would grab me and my little old hand was in his big hand and he was a pulling me on I knew I was secure I knew there was some correction and I despise chinaberry trees today <laughs> if I ever find one on my place up in Carolina and my sisters I dig that sucker up and I dig them all up I don't want to be reminded, but my goodness, he had to bring some chastisement. And sometimes we get mad at the Lord, but he knows how to chastise those he loves. How many of you are willing to say, Lord, whatever? I ain't, I'm not a praying for him right now to chastise me. Uh-uh. But if he does, I'm going to ask him why. Because he knows me. He'll say, now this is the reason, son. I've just about heard him say that. This is the reason. Ambassadors represent me. And we're all telling one another of the place we're going to be. And man, when I hear him and the Holy Spirit just gets me in the right place, I'm glad he can still bring tears to my eyes and joy to my soul. That's the Lord we serve. Then I'm going to close with this. Wow, I've got three minutes to close it in. Are you believing that? What about five? Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I want to thank Robert on, with the pastors already on behalf of his faithfulness. He drove in here from Daytona and worked to be here tonight. Now, that's keeping the house of the Lord. Amen. That's dispensing the gospel. No matter what the time of day is, God is using people around here and around the world for His cause. Don't worry. I know some of our young, all the young people haven't gone to the dogs. There's a Joshua generation still out there. And let me tell you, in Asia, and in Africa, and in that 1040 window, the Holy Ghost is falling upon people and they're leaving Hinduism. Islamic faith, they're leaving Buddhism. And they're finding Jesus and not afraid to tell it wherever they go. They're ostracized, but they got so much of Jesus that they don't care. Because God's always got somebody else to back them up. Let me say this before I get to this last point. I was in a restaurant today, and it was one of them fast food jobs. Mary Sue was then told me what she wanted, and it had to be a, it had to be special. I said, "Well, you get the seats. I'll bring it all. I'm such a gentleman." And so. 
That was a there was a little Hindu lady, young lady in front of me, and she was getting her order. She didn't know what her number was. I said, well, mine's 84. You must be 83. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And they took a long time getting our orders together. They, they didn't get hers just right, and she reminded them about it, and so they addressed that issue, and her order was correct. But she said, Jesus Christ. I said, he's a marvelous Savior. I said, he's a wonderful Savior. She said, I don't care if they got a dot or no dot. They say something about Jesus. Might as well just testify. Somebody say amen. I told you I was feeling good here tonight. Two more minutes. Praise God. I take time to be holy. I wanted to say that about that little lady. Mary Sue said, well, that, that's good, Wesley. That's good, baby. Said she'll get to thinking about that. I hope she does. I hope she remembers me with my Florida hat on and my orange and blue polo shirt on. And my green trousers. How could she not remember me? Man, when it's spring, it's spring. When it's spring, it's spring. I was kind of sprung today, brother. I was kind of sprung today. But I hope she received a visual and a photograph in her mind when I said, Jesus Christ, He's a wonderful Savior. And I said it again. And she, Nobody like that is going to defame my Lord and get by with it. Amen. And here's the last point. Others are still behind you. Others are still behind you. What it feels like to be in His house. Oh, what it feels like to be in His house. You began your journey back there in Kedar, Psalm 125. You hated to leave the tent. It was so comfortable, so filled with the illusion of satisfaction. But as a tent, it is transitory. It held no permanence for you. No dependable safety. Were you driven out or did you choose to leave? No matter. You headed for the mountain of God. Now you are here. The safe place where human hand cannot remove or deny. You're secure in Zion. In its very center within his holy hill. Pilgrim no more. Now you're at home. Verse 2. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. And praise the Lord. And praise the Lord. Your hands once lay heavy at your side. You lift them now in surrender with palms upright. In adoration, you point a finger toward the sky and say, He's my Lord. He's my Creator. You see them old boys making touchdowns? Well, we're about to finish the game. We're approaching the finish line. He's the reason. He's the reason. I give Him praise. And I give Him honor. Stand with me. That would be a cue for me to quit. If you could lift your voice this evening and let your message kind of be walked 
by the soft breezes up and over the temple wall. Across Zion's field, downward on the trail, it would carry a hopeful word to those who are camped below if they will ever finish the ascent, you can say, May the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. May God's ministry bless you from Zion. You can speak with confidence and encouraging words to others who are not so safely sheltered as you. Bless them in the name of the Lord. Bless them in the name of the Lord. Paul said in 2 Corinthians, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. He said to those in Thessalonica, fifth chapter, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Be with you. You see, especially that Psalm 121 verses 5 and 6 is a reflection of the ironic benediction of Numbers chapter 6. There's something in these Psalms that we need to hold dear. Oh, praise God, we're at the top. The Lord is coming again. Get your friend or your relative, your wife, your daddy, your sister, and let's just come. Let's come down to the altar in praise to the Lord. Give, give praise to Him tonight. You say, well, pastor, well, preacher, <laughs> am I safe at the end of the day? Yes, you are safe at the end of the day. We give Him praise here tonight. If you've gone through some difficulties, just remember, you are safe at the end of the day. You are safe at the end of the day. Praise be unto God, the author and the finisher of our faith. Give Him praise. The Lord sees the tears. He knows your cry. With uplifted hands, we praise Him. Oh, blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. We praise You. We magnify.